Desmo. Well, hello, it's Jim Desmo. You're welcome back into From the Depth. And this is a little follow up video from or to my last uh, hash video where we asked the question Does spore liner even matter? Uh, and I had misunderstood a big mechanic about hash and those spores, which made the results in that video not completely uh, accurate. Uh, so I thought that a spore liner would reduce the damage of a shell that, you know, uh, well. Basically, when a hash shells come in, I thought that the spore liner would reduce the damage a little bit. Um, probably like the damage and the, uh, both the damage and the arm piercing values. And that is not the case. The spore liner does only reduce the armor piercing value. That means that behind a spore liner, you should have a high AP material. For big ships, a lot of people use um, heavy armor beam slopes, but uh, personally, I think that a lot of people are overusing heavy armor a little bit because it can't defend against real big shit shots anyway, and it's kind of expensive. Uh, so I think more people do actually use uh, metal beam slopes as uh, hash spall lining. And that makes, that makes a lot of sense, it's pretty compact, uh, it's, it's cheap and stuff like that. And it's also uh, will be a little bit easier to test because uh, heavy armor beam slopes, uh, we're gonna test that a little bit later of course, but that's probably the best thing you can have as a spall liner in general. And if you're facing a lot of heat or hash, you should absolutely have heavy armor beam slopes as spall lining. It's gonna be expensive, but if that's what you're facing, it's probably worth it. Right, so what is happening here? Well, when a hash shell com comes in and shoots at an armor piece, the thicker the armor, the less um, damage it uh, should do the hash shell when it comes into the armor. So really thick armor, as we could see a little bit before, does somewhat protect against the uh, hash, but it doesn't protect so much that you should rely on having thick armor, because those fragments that spawn on the other side, even though the armor may be super thick, it's still gonna be pretty dangerous. Uh, so, when it hits, it's going to make a little calculation thing based on uh, the uh, composition of the armor. So here on screen, I will show you a couple of different graphs, which uh, Belkent from our Discord has uh, put together, that tells us a little bit about the damage of uh, hash. By the way, my assumption, my assumption or memory rather before that heat does not care about your spore liner remains to be so it's only hash that cares about your spore liner however the spore catcher which in our example is uh, metal beam slopes that's of course the same when it comes to heat it's good to have them against heat so in the first little graph from Belkent we can see here that uh, the thickness of the armor does decrease the uh, uh, does decrease the damage. So if we have 10 meter armor, uh, the spoils does less damage, of course. And if we have only two meters of armor, the spoils almost do like double damage. But seriously, if you have 10 meters of armor, you can see that the damage is still kind of a lot. So even though the thickness of the armor does make the hash less dangerous, and the composition, it's still going to be the case that uh, they still do a lot of damage, so you can't rely on that at all. On the other little graph here, we can see that uh, the uh, composition of the armor compared to wood with uh, some metal makes it so that the armor piercing value is a lot lower when the armor is thinner. So if you have one meter of metal and one meter of wood, you can see the damage is high, but the armor piercing value is still very, it, it's dragged down to 16, which means that um, 
this, these balls will not do a lot of damage if we have heavy armor or metal behind it. Uh, or probably a plick panels too for that matter. And if we look at the thickest example where we have 9 meters of metal and 1 meter of wood, we can see that the spore liner drags down the AP value by 8. So even though you have very thick armor, it seems that the spore liner is actually doing a difference. So even though it's thick, it doesn't mean it's uh, useless. Because the last, uh, the last layer is also the most important one. And here we're just a little bit grazingly, we have hash damage compared to AP, as well as AP. Uh, and if you want to see the graph um, yourselves, um, you can just go to the hashtag from the depth channel in our Discord and, uh, well, Belkent posted it there a while ago, so you can see it. In just a few days. So even though the uh, damage should be higher when the armor is thinner, and less sturdy like that, the damage reduction thanks to the AP cutdown is still gonna be very big. And here we can see some calculations that um, I don't want to think about too much because I don't like to think too much about math equations when I'm playing from depth, but it's pretty useful. If you want to get into the math equations, that's probably your best way to find the most optimal things. Um, and. If you can tell anything from this, then, uh, well, here we have it at least. Right, so here we have my little <clears throat> example thing. Uh, I did use the in-game damage uh, data, just so we can see the results here. Here we have uh, three different spall liners. Um, we have two meters of metal and one meter of wood spawn liner. Here we have three meters of metal, so basically no spall liner, or I mean, um, metal is the spore liner in this case, but it's not another material, so it doesn't count as a lining. And here we have the absolute worst type of spore liner, uh, heavy armor. So, and because this will increase the values. So if we look at just metal, 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 then we have the spore lining release. The damage will vary a little bit. It's, uh, it's not consistent like that, but approximately, you know, 3k ish damage all of these have approximately 3k ish damage um, but you can see that the armor piercing value of these balls are 40 because uh, metal if we look at the wooden one the ap value is 21 so basically cut down by half this means they should do half the damage uh, approximately ish like that especially when they hit an angle um, now i don't know the I don't know the um, math perfectly, but I, if I recall correctly, I think that if you only have armor piercing value of your projectile, that's half the, uh, the armor piercing value of the or, or armor protection value of, of the thing you're hitting. Uh, if you only have half of that, you're only dealing kind of half of damage. So I think it was like that. And if you look at this thing, the spalls are no not 40, but 50. So we can see here in this example that with a wood spore liner it didn't get through the the uh, the spore catcher, and with a no spore liner it did get through the spore catcher but did not damage the internals, and with the heavy armor one it did go through the spore catching and damaged the internals. So we should repair all. We should uh, also go into, let's see her. Is it here now? Yeah. Damage debug and clear this thing so we can do a test again. So, fire there, fire there, and fire here. And now we can see we did some, we did get slightly different results here. Uh, not as good of an example, but you can see that it varies a little bit. Sometimes it feels a little bit like it's a random. So that's why I wanted to show you the earlier example. <laughs> but here are 52, this one is 40, and this one is 21. And you can see that it actually looks like isn't the damage exactly the same as the last ones? I'm gonna try around more.
here we go. So, um, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, the damage does not vary at all. The damage, now this is a ricochet. The damage is the same. Two, six, eight, six on this. Two, eight. Yeah, so since this is thicker armor, it deal it gets the least amount of damage, you know, at the heavy armor. This armor is the thickest, so the damage is reduced the most amount, it seems then. And for this one, it's in the middle, and for this one it's the highest, because this armor is the thinnest, because wood is it's kind of flimsy. See, it didn't get through, did get the through the spall liner and damaged the internals. Uh, did get through the spall liner and damaged the internals. And yeah, uh, by the way, of course, um, I should have thought about that. Um, if we just look at... Do, 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 do. No, that's the wrong one. Here. Uh, so, the armor piercing value um, of the spalls are 40. And in this case, they are 52. Uh, so, we would only see a difference between these components if uh, we had a, uh, a heavy armor spall liner. Because, of course... Um, and we're gonna test that right away, by the way. So if we already have more than the AP value and then the material we meet, then we of course are going to deal more damage. And if it's twice that, it's ain't gonna matter. So that's the error I did in the last video. I used wood or um, wood or stone as kind of uh, the area behind to check the damage. And since those had the low armor uh, like values, like stone has 16, and metal has uh, no and um, wood has eight uh, basically it didn't matter that it decreased the uh, the ap value because it still had more ap values than the material it was hitting so it was dealing full damage uh, in all cases so that's basically why we didn't see a difference in the last video and here we can see we can see a difference oh, well one little critic video um jono 1928 made a little video to basically um, ask if spore liner was like he thought that spore liner is a good idea and i'm going to prove it so we made a little short video of it you can check it in the description if you want to check that uh, and i want to check a little claim he made a little bit later that uh, rubber since rubber has an uh, armor value of six it should be better to use than stone than wood i mean but uh, rubber is not a structural block, so it shouldn't work. Uh, but maybe it works anyways. We're gonna check that. We're gonna see if it works. I don't think it will, but it may. We don't know if we don't test it. So one thing I added to is I added heavy armor between the test subjects because I don't want to have cross pollution. Right, so now I wanna test with thicker armor. So, whoops, that didn't work. Okay, now. I just want to test with some thicker armor here and see if we have any difference. So, interesting. With the thicker armor, we can see that the spall liner actually did less, uh, did matter less. This one still survived the best, as you can see. This one. Uh, well, it was kind of lucky, but you can see, oh yeah, both of these, all of these slopes were completely disappeared. So you can see the spall liner still mattered here, but it was less important because the armor was thicker. So if we check the values here, we can see that this one has in, um, the, the spalls have an AP of 26. Here they have an AP of 40. And here they have an 8p of uh, 49. So since uh, it's thicker, the severeness of the spalls that come from the heavy armor spall liner is like less severe. And the effect effectiveness of the spalls coming from the armor with a wood liner is, um, well, less important in this case. So I think we can do like this. We're just gonna do one shot more to just check here didn't get through oh this one got a real bad hit and this one didn't get through 
So you can see though, um, even though we have a one meter of heavy armor which decreases the damage of the shot, it's still more effective with one meter of uh, wood. And remember that one meter of wood costs you, uh, well, one material per square meter, and one meter of heavy armor costs 25 materials per square, square meters. So it's uh, gonna be like 25x more expensive with that, and they have the same results. So yeah. Right, let's test some rubber then. So, uh, to compare, we're going to have wood, we're going to have a heavy armor, and we're going to have rubber in the middle here. And uh, we know that if we only had metal, the spalls would have the AP value of 40 in all cases, so we don't need to measure that. So, let us fire. And this one. And this one. By the way, the armor testing platform... Oh no. It, they didn't get through, did they? I don't think so. Ah, well, we'll see the math anyways. If you want this testing platform, you can download it. Um, if you want to download everything I got, um, you can become a commissioned officer. And you'll get that. Right, so what do we have here? Here we have a spool of 21 AP. Here we have a spool of 40 AP. And here we have a spool of 52. So this counts as if it were only metal. By this simple test we can conclude that having a spore liner of rubber does absolutely nothing. So that's wasted materials. You should only use rubber to EMP insulate stuff and insulate stuff from uh, kinetic damage and crashes and stuff like that. Good, now we, have, now we know this, debunked. What about having applique panels as a spore liner instead of metal beam slopes? Applique panels have very low health, but you can see here they have a health of 600, so very low, but they, ha they have an AP value of 50, which means that um, they are going to, which means that the, va the damage they are taking is gonna reduce them, like, they're gonna reduce the damage that they are taking greatly with a 50 AP. So in this case, uh, we should see greater results from this particular situation. So let's try and round up some shots here and test. And the next one. And the next one. Wow, okay. All right. Yeah, <laughs> so they have so little health, they are really getting deleted here. So, uh, whoops, oh no, I, now I deleted. 21 AP at least, uh, 40 AP, and 52, as normal, of course they are. This thing went through, this wing went through the wooden spore liner, it didn't go through. Let's rerun this test, but as you can see, if we ever had a conclusion that said we uh, don't need to use spore liners, that's because my last tests were faulty, and that's why we're doing the test again. Right, so now that it didn't go through here, it did go through here, and oh, whoa, okay, but it did go through here. So, uh, we can clearly see that spore liner does indeed help, but the results are so variable. Like, all of the blocks behind here have been taking some substantial damage, but the spores spalled in a way, so it was kind of lucky. Yeah, we're just going to do like that. So sometimes you might get the reversed results. You, you really apparently need to do a couple of results to get some kind of data, because it just varies so much. So, got through, didn't damage, got through, didn't damage, didn't get, get through. Yeah. It's really inconsistent, but uh, if you do enough tests, it is consistent. And from these data, we can see that the AP is reduced. I can't believe I didn't check that uh, when I first did the tests, uh, because I forgot. I, I basically thought they, they reduced damage and not AP. And now we know they reduce AP only. 
And rather, they, they don't decrease damage. It, it's the other way around, because the thicker armor you have, the less damage they do. But that reduction is so small that we shouldn't care about it and just care about the AP behind. So anyways, uh, I think it's time we should uh, replace these applic panels with a couple of uh, heavy armor beam slopes instead that a lot of people use for this. Uh, because as you might understand from this little test, like these applic panels are spore liners, they are super flimsy and they are absolutely really good in theory, but then the hash needs to be small enough so that the damage they deal are not enough to destroy them. And if we say have a, now we have a 450 millimeter hash, and that's of course a very big one. If we have a really small hash, we should actually try that. Like 150 millimeters. We can probably see that they do a pretty good, they probably do a, a really good uh, work of not getting deleted, I'd, I'd, I'd suspect. There we can see, didn't do much. Oops. Come on. Thank you. Yeah, so here we can see uh, if we have it like this, uh, the spalls here, they are of course 50 AP, so they deal full damage to the blocks behind. The spalls here are um, 40 AP, so not quite full damage. And the spalls here are 21 AP, so they deal whole, less than half the damage they should deal to these panels. So, yes, you can have a plick panels as a spore liner, uh, no, as a spore catcher, if you have wood as a spore liner, and you're meeting kind of pretty light hash shells, hash shells that are like 200 millimeters or less, then this should be a pretty good and cheap defense. On the other hand, I do suspect that using metal beam slopes, we just check here, click panel, this one costs 8 materials, if we go here, this one costs 10 materials, so the metal beam slope is a little bit more expensive, but just a little bit, I do think we'll be getting better results with this, if we just, if we just line up this here, we can just shoot a couple of rounds, you can see, I think we have a pretty similar result from this, except now it got through. Right, we're back with um, bigger shells, 475, and we're going to use some uh, heavy armor beam slopes, uh, where there should be a big difference between metal only and metal heavy armor. So let us uh, let us um, let us have some fun. Let us take down the time a little bit here. Bam! You can see in real effect how little. Oh god, damn it, that just did so little damage. Well, <coughs> lined up perfectly. And this fires here. Oh! Got straight through, even though it hit it at a really, really, really narrow angle. That's pretty interesting. Okay. But didn't do much damage behind it, did it? Line it up here. And fire. And here we can see... Ooh, I wonder if the damage reduction kind of helped a little bit here. Well, let's check some values here. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So here we have uh, 21 AP, 3400 damage. Here we have uh, 40 AP, 2,951, 52 AP, 2,749. Cool. We're trying it out once again, just to check for some variability. And there we can see, okay, didn't get through, did not get through, didn't get through. You know, I think we already know the data here, so we're going to turn off damage debugging, go a repair all, and just go back and fire once. I think two shots. Okay, three shots. One shot, two shot. Got through on two, okay. 
And the last one. One shot, two shot. Uh. All right. If we do like this, one, two, three, through on three. One, two, three. Yeah, so, oops. So the damage, as you can see, uh, does uh, does it like that. One, two, three. Now it really got... Did I shoot several there? This is weird. Anyways, two shots, no problem. Third, it just gets through there. One, two, yeah, two, through on two. And this thing, one, two, well, through on two. <laughs> yeah, so okay, uh, it seems that, whoops, the spore liner does indeed do something. Um, it seems to be a valuable asset to have from all test results so far. Um, it seems indeed that uh, just my little mistake before was the big uh, was the big thing that just made it kind of useless. Uh, so we're going to do one last test here, and I'm going to try and test the effectiveness of uh, spore liners uh, versus. Well, the effectiveness of spall liners versus more space. Because in the last test, it looked like it were kind of important that we just have the, more, the most space uh, possible. So here we can see we have a little, uh, little setup thing here. We captured this and mount it here. Just like that. We have very thin armor. But the only difference is we have increased the space that's going here. So in the last results, we came to, we came to the conclusion that the spall liner may seem to be about as important as uh, just increasing the space. Uh, and those values we got from the last episode were probably not very true. Um, so it seems that perhaps having a spall liner uh, in those cases just increase the thickness of the armor and thus reduce the damage of the shells. While uh, the increased space in this air gap makes it so that the hash spread out it just doesn't reach very much deep into the armor. So let's try this out. Here we have a hash straight on like that. I want to see a rerun of this because I wondered did they go through completely? No? They spawned here. Okay, so the air gap worked. Good. That's just what I wanted to know. And there. And there. Right, so here we can see the spread out is really wide, did not have have no chance to go through. The spread out was less wide, all of the panels, all of the beam slows behind got taken out. Here the spread out was so sharp that they actually damaged the internal components. Uh, and why do I use steam parts as internal components? Well, uh, in Jonas little rundown, he basically said that, you know, decrease the AP value of the shots uh, should protect the most against uh, components with some AP value. So I think this has a 20 or 15 or something like that. Here we can see, whoops, they have 20 AC. So if we decrease the AP value, um, they should actually take less damage from spalls if they go through the uh, protection layer uh, in front of it. Anyways, let's shoot again. Here we can see BAM, damage to internal components. Shoot again here, BAM, no damage to internal components. Some of the blocks here got destroyed. And if we go to the last one, two meters, yeah. So, having an air gap seems to be quite important. Uh, I wonder, however, having two meters like this in general seems to be a little bit better than having just one meter. Not a huge difference so far, but some. Um, and having two meters is probably good. Having three meters, I think, would reduce the uh, damage from the Hesh even more. But that's a lot of space to spend for air two. But I think we got some more concise conclusions um, this time. We can clearly see that you should use a spall liner. They do a great job, but 
you need to have a block behind of the spore liner that actually benefits from the re reduced AP, which is at least alloy, uh, preferably metal, and in some cases heavy armor. And in some special cases when you're doing light chips uh, that are going to fence off with some not too heavy uh, hash rounds, well then applique panels can also work. Rubber is uh, BS. Don't worry about that. Don't you? You can't use rubber as a spore liner. Um, and increased air gaps are good. So cool. I think we got some new results um, from this one, and it really increased my understanding of uh, how hash works, and hopefully yours too. So now we can conclude that yes, spore liners, they're good. But remember, only against hash, heat, heat don't care about that. So then we can speak about spore catcher. But I'll probably do some tutorial in the future where we go through a little bit on what is the best type of armor against hash or heat rounds. So see you next time. This is your host, Jim Desmond. We're signing out.